also how now we bring circularity within brands that are historically a linear business model. Of course, new businesses, new models, new innovations create a whole set of new challenges. One of the things that I was thinking about with Vestiaire Collective is in some ways, unlike a uh, a linear fashion business, you now have this need to create both supply and demand for your platform. I guess that's a kind of challenge. That's the beauty and also the challenge because yes, we have to have the supply in order to answer the demand. So for instance, you have markets uh, like Germany when you have lots of buyers and in Italy, lots of sellers. But if we want to really go and move forward, you, we need to have more local supply and consumer. So Brexit was a, a good uh, example of that. We, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Brexit was a good example because the consumer in UK would have been completely cut off the rest of Europe and the rest of, of the world. Otherwise, it would have been really, really lots of money to just buy an item on Vestia. So we managed to have this operational um, center directly in the uh, UK and also a tech improvement for people in UK to see the supply from UK first. So we, show, we are able to showcase today the, the supply locally. And I guess it's a good example for us to align our business with with the planet and continue to improve, shutting the transportation, cutting uh, the transportation and, and take Brexit as an example, actually. <laughs> it was just the idea of answering to a simple issue. What are we doing with the 70% of our wardrobe unworn? So those six founders started in Paris, in France, and then expand slowly in Europe and then US and APAC. I guess one of the key, one of the key, sorry, challenge was to digital this sector and then also enable a community of today 15 million members to connect and to have this giant world war uh, across the world. All good things start in Paris. But um, I guess what your, what your platform is doing is it's collect, connecting kind of supply and demand, right? Yes. Connecting people who are not using clothes with people who can use those clothes. Now, it should be said that resale isn't automatically circular. What, how does circular economy play into your business? Yes, yeah, circular economy for us is not just being a virtuous uh, business model as Vestiaire, but if you want to close the loop on Vestiaire, it's first with the consumer, so not just buying and selling, but really buy and sell. And that's how we want to change the way people consume fashion is exactly when you do both. Then also, I, I guess it's also how now we bring circularity within brands that are historically a linear business model with new project, but I will talk, talk to you uh, about that uh, later. Trade here. I'm, I'm just an <laughs> humble receiver of information. And then also it's how we trigger this systemic change by lobbying and working with like the EMF, the World Economic Fashion, uh, the World Economic Forum, so, sorry. Um, yes, I guess it's everything that we can do from our consumer to the bigger ecosystem. One of the advantages I think circular economy innovators like yourself have is they end up in a sort of data center position. Like you're obviously Vestiaire is a marketplace, so you're kind of finding out what people are prepared to pay for certain clothing. And that becomes really valuable information for the rest of the sector. Um, and I guess it's really interesting moving forward. I wondered in 60 seconds if you could tell us a bit about what's kind of next or on horizon for Vestiaire beyond your um, impressive growth so far. Yeah, I guess one of the things that we succeed doing is knowing the price of an item after the boutique. And it's something that the brand doesn't know really about. They do all the upstream, but then and when it goes out, you don't know how much value is behind your item. So we're trying to today bring that to the, to the brand with Resell as a Service is us sharing data and expertise on second hand, but also how we work on digital ID and digital innovation. So one of the blockers for people to enter second hand platform is the listing and the time you spend listing your items. So for instance, if you would buy this shirt, 
and have all the information and just list it on a platform in three, four, five seconds. 